At number 10, we have Max versus Kruger in Elysium. The movie takes place in the year 2154, when most of Earth's citizens live in poverty, while the rich and powerful live on Elysium, a giant man-made space station in Earth's orbit. And Matt Damon plays an Earth citizen who gets sick with radiation poisoning due to an industrial accident and needs to get to Elysium for a cure. Smuggler Spider makes a deal with Max to help get him there in exchange for Max obtaining financial information for him from Elysium designer John Carlyle and has an exoskeleton surgically attached to Max in order to aid him in his quest. Long story short, near the end of the movie, he ends up facing off against Elysium agent and main villain Kruger in Elysium's computer core. Kruger wears a military-grade exoskeleton superior to Max's, and the two go head-to-head -head in a melee. The battle is more bare bones than other fights involving exoskeletons, as the suits are realistic and not very protective. It was more like an enhanced fist fight than a true epic mecha suit brawl. At number 9 is the final battle in Avatar. Colonel Miles Quaritch in his Mitsubishi MK6 amplified mobility platform up against an evil Navi scum and the infamous traitor Jake Sully. The AMP is an especially capable suit, allowing its wearer to operate giant weapons and move like a human can. Now, yes, ultimately Quaritch loses this fight, but the battle was already lost when this final showdown started. Quaritch showed great honor in that even when he knew his SecOps were defeated, he didn't run away. He stood his ground on the Navi's home turf and fought until his last breath, defending himself with the AMP suit's combat knife. <sighs> yes, way to prove you're not a savage beast by growling when the Navi have a spoken language. Coming in at number 8 is the final fight in Neil Blomkamp's Alien Apologist Manifesto, District 9. In the film, an alien race known properly as Prawns invades, sorry, comes to Earth peacefully and are graciously taken in by the South African government and relocated for free to District 9, a camp which over the years deteriorates into a slum because the aliens didn't take good care of it. The movie's protagonist is Vickus, the entitled son-in-law of a corporate executive who heads Multinational United, or MNU, a benevolent international weapons manufacturer that has been tasked with relocating the aliens to a new camp outside the city. Vickus, according to the media, is a traitor who has contracted an STD by way of sex with aliens. This is the kind of perversion that pro-alien humans like Neil Blomkamp support and encourage. At the end of the film, Vickus attempts to save his prawn pal Christopher from a bunch of hungry Nigerian mercenaries trying to eat the alien and encroaching MNU forces. And he does so by taking control of a prawn biosuit that he's only able to pilot because of the prawn fluid that entered him due to his indiscretions with the aliens. Vickus goes on to kill numerous humans using the suit's weapons as the escape scene unfolds. At number 7, we have the final battle in Starship Troopers Traitor of Mars. In the movie, legendary MI Johnny Rico has been demoted from general to colonel due to him having allowed bugs to invade Earth in Starship Troopers Invasion, and he is sent to train a group of new recruits on Mars. Near the end of the movie, Sky Marshal Amy Snap, who wants to destroy Mars in order to advance her political power, dishonestly announces to the citizens of the Terran Federation that no sign of human life is left on Mars and the time has come to blow it up. But the mobile infantry does not give up, and Rico's platoon cuts into her broadcast to announce that the fight isn't over. Rico and his troops plan to destroy a terraforming station on Mars by overloading the reactor, so it blows up and kills all of the oncoming bugs. But the MI needs to buy time while the reactor is prepared, so a few members of the platoon stand on the end of the bridge going out from the station, holding off thousands of bugs while Gio and Camacho take care of business inside the reactor. The citizens of the Terran Federation all watch as these young, brave Martian humans stand willing to give their lives to kill the bug scum for the sake of humanity. Their powered armor, perhaps the best in exosuit history, helps them kill swaths of bugs while they await their expected deaths. Yes, the bugs might have ripped Dutch's body in half, but not his pride. And that is what is truly important. At number 6 is the time loop beach battle from Edge of Tomorrow. In the film, humans and Tom Cruise are engaged in a global war against an alien race called Mimics. United Defense Force Major William Cage has been relegated to the infantry and sent out to the battlefield to die, which he does many times due to being stuck in a Groundhog Day-esque time loop. The UDF wear combat jackets, exosuits that greatly enhance the human soldier, though Tom Cruise has stated that the suit actually restrained his abilities. The time loop battle is great high intensity action, 
but what truly makes it unique is that it's a battle we get to see play out more than once in different ways, as Cage and Sergeant Rita Vertasky learn the battle and attempt to master it. Cage and Vertasky may have died brutal deaths over and over again in loop, but not a single time did their pride ever vanquish. At number five, we have the Battle of Zion in the Matrix Revolutions. During the battle, the Resistance, made up of 10,000 infantry and a small faction of armored personnel units, faced off against the machines, 250,000 Sentinels. Captain Mifune valiantly leads his troops into battle, knowing that it is their day to die, but that they're gonna give the machines a whole lot of hell on the way out. Because in the words of Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, f robots. Mifune is just about the last APU standing, at which point you could put the damn movie on mute and you'd still be able to hear the sweet, sultry sounds of Resistance Warrior and legendary New Jerseyan John Bon Jovi as he sings out, I'm going down in a blaze of glory. And hey, the Sentinels may have eventually ripped off Mifune's skin alive, but you know what they didn't rip off? His pride. At number four, we have Batman vs. Superman. No, not the live action fight. Instead, we've selected their battle in the absolutely superb DC Universe animated original movie, Batman The Dark Knight Returns Part 2. Amidst a nuclear winter, Gotham descends into chaos and company man Superman is sent by the government to take down an aging Batman as he undermines their authority. Normally, this should be an easy task for the omnipotent Superman, but Batman arrives at their confrontation wearing powered battle armor and the fight is nearly equal as both parties pummel each other in a gritty duel. Superman finally closes in on victory, but before he can seal the deal, a kryptonite-tipped arrow from Green Arrow's bow takes him down. As Superman struggles to stay conscious, he realizes that among all of his abilities, he's missing the only superpower that really matters, a personality. At number three, we have the Paris chase battle in G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra. The scene features Joe's Duke and Ripcord pursuing Baroness and Storm Shadow in state-of-the-art Delta VI accelerator suits. What makes this scene so cool is that it puts a new spin on the standard car chase sequence by throwing powered armor into the race. Duke and Ripcord launch themselves through the city streets as they try to stop Cobra from detonating a warhead at the Eiffel Tower. The two Joes went full speed in one of the most over-the-top scenes in recent action movie history. They might have ended up crashing, and while the Eiffel Tower ultimately came crashing down as well, you know what didn't crash? Yup, that's right their pride. Honestly, better the Eiffel Tower be knocked down now. I've always been afraid that Xenos will invade and use that glorified antenna as a bludgeon. At number two is the final fight in Aliens. The remaining survivors of LV-426 think they have safely escaped on the Sulaco, but the Xenomorph Queen was able to stow away on the ship before it departed from the moon, and makes a surprise appearance, ripping the android bishop in half. But though severed in two, his pride was won. Actually, no, he probably lost his pride. The scene is mostly good because the P5000 powered loader that Ellen Ripley uses to fight the Xenomorph isn't that capable. It's clunky and unshielded, and the fight is tense, as Ripley desperately holds the alien back as it shoots out its inner jaw in what is at worst an attempt to kill Ripley, and at best an attempt at a forced makeout sesh that while perhaps isn't murder, still should not be done without her consent thus making Xenomorphs the most perverted alien species next to dolphins, which are basically the R. Kelly's of the ocean. Anyway, eventually Ellen crushes the Xenomorph with the mech suit and expels it from an airlock. Of course, she manages to stay inside the ship by holding on real tight to a ladder rug. And finally at number one is the Hulk versus Hulkbuster armor in Avengers Age of Ultron. There isn't much to set up here. In the movie, the non-demonic Olsen twin, aka Scarlet Witch, uses her telepathic powers to send the Hulk into a rage on the streets of Johannesburg, South Africa. Tony Stark must then use his Mark 44 armor, better known as the Hulkbuster, to stop it. There was probably more than a little part of Stark that wanted this to happen in the first place. I mean, you'd think he could invent something that could stop the Hulk that wouldn't require such destruction. But nonetheless, the battle was epic, living up to the expectations of a Hulk versus Iron Man battle. The two heroes traversed the city, with the Hulk destroying it, and Stark half attempting to protect the surrounding people while fighting the Hulk, and half also destroying it. Well, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. If nothing else, I hope you learned today that any negative situation can be seen in a positive light by simply keeping your pride. For now, 
I'm American Ben, reminding you to never forget the men and women who have perished fighting aliens across the universe. Heroes who died protecting freedom. We fight on for them, my brethren, and for Argentina. Humanity first, and die Navi scum. Generation Films, dismissed.